Greetings from beautiful Cape Town, South Africa. I am Sune Stassen, a designer, educator, impact entrepreneur, the founder and CEO of Open Design Africa, and the country ambassador for the Tegilio Design District in Italy. I always look at our man-made world through a design lens with the human race at the helm as the chief designer. For generations, we have successfully engineered a destructive and unjust world for living in. In South Africa, design was actively used to segregate people during apartheid. With our World Design Capital 2014 tagline, Live Design, Transform Life, it was a great opportunity for the city of Cape Town to show how design is now being used as a catalyst to start transforming Cape Town into a more inclusive city. I believe the world has a lot to learn from our continent. Africa is rich in indigenous knowledge systems that's been sustainable for generations. And as the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. There has never been a shortage of entrepreneurial spirit in Africa. Even people with limited resources who innovate due to necessity and survival have the inherent ability to persevere, conquer many obstacles and to succeed. Many successful African designers, architects, crafters, innovators and impact entrepreneurs have been celebrated as bold and authentic storytellers of Africa's rich and diverse melting pot of cultures and contrasting landscapes. They constantly push the boundaries with a can-do attitude to improve life and well-being innovations that can greatly add value to global challenges. There's a lot of beauty and joy that comes from Africa and our time is now to show that and showcase that to the rest of the world. What better time to do that than around the festive season when a place like the waterfront really, really comes alive, where it really becomes animated, where people from all over this country, all over Africa and all over the world converge. It makes my heart jump with joy that for once we're going to have an African Christmas theme. I think it's very long overdue that the waterfront does away with the white Christmas. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Africa is the source of great spirituality, great creativity. So it's completely fitting that the waterfront is celebrating Africa in this manner. The approach that we've taken this year is one of sustainability. We're using upcycling, recycling, repurposing. Using local designers and local producers and not looking to Europe for inspiration. This was something that was really close to our heart, ensuring that each and every piece has an element of community co-creation. And all great African communities have fantastic basket design. So we saw the basket primarily as the new Christmas bauble. One is a traditional Nkosa weaving technique, and the other is an adaption of a Zulu weaving technique. It's difficult because you're supposed to, if you, you, you start for this line, you suppose make it tightly. If you, now, you are not making tightly, the others, it's loose and ugly. It's my culture. <laughs> It made. We started with this wireframe, then we take it like a filler. We stuff so that it can come in shape. Then we take a cloth, we wrap it out, then we do the beadwork. The beadwork we're doing piece and piece and piece, then afterwards we're gonna join it. We're making about plus minus 50 artworks, and we have like over 35 artists that are working on this because some of the artworks 
a two artist working on the one because they are huge. Some of the installations you'll see will be mythical creatures that are created from hand, literally from scratch, by the ladies at Monkey Biz. And there's a whole team and ecosystem of African and South African artists who are helping us bring this vision to life. We decided to create this beautiful African palace on a huge scale. We have been working together myself and platform in making sure that there's a good balance between the print and the animals. This is the paper that we put over. It's metal, but then we put paper around and then we're going to cover. The other ones will be covered in stripes and the other one will be covered in pineapples. We collect any types of plastic produce. Take this one and then you cut it like something like this. Anything you can make out of plastic bottle. It's the first time we get the, the job like this one. It was big. We make more than 500 flowers and then we collect 1,000 bottles. Anything I see, I just come up with the design. I've got my son, I've got my niece, I've got my nephew. So it has created a lot of job for them. If I go to a waterfront, I see it's my work. The people come from England, come from Tanzania, come from everywhere. They see my work. This is African design. It shows that it was done by an African, and I'm proud of that. I like it, my talk. Oh, I'm very, very happy. I'm so proud. And all of us at our workshop, we are proud. Wow, you know, walking there and saying this is my work, if you tell them this is handmade, like, wow. The artist, actually, they're going to just go feel proud of themselves to go with their families and to choose to say, this is my work. Joy from Africa to the world. Joy from Africa to the world. Joy! Joy from Africa to the world. 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 Blue Cape was established in 2019 as a special purpose vehicle that solely focuses on driving the development of a thriving future ocean economy in South Africa. Blue Cape links, connects and facilitates training, jobs and opportunities in the ocean economy. It sets out to inspire, support and link like-minded blue initiatives, addresses bottlenecks and makes good waves to the benefit of businesses, environmentalists and activists connected to the ocean. In collaboration with our founding partners, the City of Cape Town and the V&A Waterfront, Blue Cape also supports ocean sports, visiting superyachts and marine manufacturing. With a 2.2 billion rand boat building industry and internationally award-winning catamarans and designs, South Africa is the second largest producer of twin-hulled sailing and power yachts in the world. The busiest kite boarding destination in the world between November and March is our very own Bloberg Beach in Cape Town. Our super yacht crew training and the reputation of South Africa crew on international super, mega and giga yachts make South Africa proud. And to the yachts that moor in our beautiful V&A waterfront marina under the watchful eye of Table Mountain, we offer world-class services, retail and dining. While we think big about boats, Blue Cape also thinks about individuals and aims to make a difference in the lives of young people in Cape Town. With a record high unemployment levels in our country, our philosophy is that just one job makes an impact. We have learnerships in sail making and internships in yacht rigging, all leading to jobs. We train lifeguards to international standards and find them opportunities on our beautiful beaches and our municipal pools. And in the meantime, world and cruise ship lifeguarding opportunities are their oyster. 
Partnering with local youth interventions such as Waves for Change, Sail Africa, Royal Cape Yacht Sailing Academy and Law Hill Maritime Centre, Blue Cape aims to create opportunities and career pathways into the ocean economy. Bringing ocean-minded youth to training programs and job opportunities is a core focus. Cape Town also looks after some of the world's best kelp forests. Soon to become a marine world heritage site, our beaches and coastlines are famous throughout the world and offer marine adventure opportunities such as whale watching, snorkeling with seals, deep water spear fishing, kayak and surf ski touring, kiteboarding, windsurfing, sup, sports fishing, scuba diving and more. As we're located at the tip of Africa, Cape Town is also a popular stop for visiting super yachts who require vigorous service standards and seven star service. With ocean sports, super yachting and marine manufacturing contributing 4.2 billion rand in the local economy and employing over 6,700 people, the work of Blue Cape is key to unlocking potential and ensuring that real opportunities make a real difference in the lives of people and secure a thriving future for the rich ocean life along our coastlines. We are really excited about future prospects of the ocean economy and to develop a sustainable strategy that will align and drive the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals way into the future. As a founding partner of Blue Cape, the VND Waterfront is privileged and honored to be part of a community that adds great value to the ocean economy. For one, our seawater cooling plant is pioneering and points to the future of desalination in this region. We also offer and operate a world-class passenger cruise terminal. We offer coastal and marine tourism and add valuable research components through the Two Oceans Aquarium. Our circular economy is the linear life cycle of the goods we use daily. We know it is unsustainable, and the more single-use items that come on stream, the greater the challenge. In 2019 alone, South Africa sent around 95 tons of waste to landfill sites. And each item of waste has a carbon and water footprint, as well as a waste footprint. Everything we use and throw away contributes to global warming, water fragility, and climate change. At the waterfront, we're deeply committed to learning about and adopting circularity in as many ways as possible. Circularity is a paradigm built around a system of closed loops in which raw materials, components, and products lose as little value as possible through each iteration of their use. Used and unwanted items stay within the value system in a framework that aims to gradually decouple growth from the consumption of finite resources. Waste is either designed out of the system or things are designed so that value is sustained. The waterfront has a long-held commitment to reducing its footprint and one of the ways in which circular design shows up is in our sustainability strategy. In a design intended to preempt waste going to landfill and to reduce our water and energy burden, we're establishing a pyrolysis plant. A pyrolysis plant is a plant that's based on waste to energy. Waste generated in our precinct would be burned at high temperatures, leading to very low emissions and minimal ash, which in and of itself can be used in the building sector. The resulting energy will go to supplement the solar power we already produce across the roofs within our precinct. Between the two, they produce almost all the power needed to run a desalination plant. And the fresh water from this plant, in turn, will supplement the water rescued through our modular black water treatment plant and will meet all the needs and all the non-potable water needs of our precinct, including our beautiful landscaping. There are many other examples, and we're proud to have won global acclaim for our integration of EcoBricks into a large construction, one of which is the local headquarters of a global advisory firm. Around 12,000 EcoBricks are used. EcoBricks are effectively two liter PET plastic bottles stuffed to a given density with plastic waste. And these eco bricks were used as void formers in concrete blocks. This takes waste out of the system 
the system, which includes the ocean, but more importantly, perhaps, reduces the use of concrete. Concrete, which has a colossal carbon footprint. Also, staying within the development space, we're currently busy with a new build project that uses primarily salvaged materials, like recycled glass bottles, other glass, tires, paper tubes, roof sheeting, timber, and stone. I believe that collaborative creative intelligence is a superpower and that every child and citizen should have the right to develop it. This will enable and empower everyone to confidently contribute to the future making of a world we can all feel proud to live, work and play in. and people from around the world to actions, small seeds of change. Everywhere! Because collectively, the impact will be massive! Today, we have the most important design brief to write in the history of mankind to secure a thriving future for humanity and the planet. Our African humanist philosophy of Ubuntu beautifully defines that I am, you are, because of who we all are. Let's design our futures together.